In this video, we're going to talk about a problem that thousands of people face when they're playing the open guard. When I say thousands of people, I polled over 60,000 grapplers on my email list and I asked them what their number one problem was when playing open guard. And tons of people said they don't understand what they should be doing as far as grips when playing open guard. Now, when I do this video, I'm not going to talk about specific type of open guards, essentially. I'm not going to say um, De La Hiva this or reverse De La Hiva this or spider guard this. I'm going to give you a concept and concepts to help you regardless of the type of guard you're playing because it's going to it's gonna make your life a little bit easier when it comes to gripping with the open guard. Now, let's talk about some things. So we're here like this. Now, it, it, could, it could depend on the type of open guard you're playing. It could depend on whether he's down on his knees or he's standing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention these different things. Right now, I'm in like a sitting guard type of position. I might even be in like a, like a De La Hiva type of position, or maybe even in like a reverse De La Hiva type of position, so on and so forth. The concept still applies. And what it is, is that when you're playing open guard, most of the time, I'm not going to say every single time because there are exceptions to rules, but most of the time you should be focusing on controlling at least one arm. And the reason for that is because if I control at least one of his arms, now he doesn't have two hands and two arms to basically work to pass my guard. If he, have, if he has use of both of his arms and both of his hands to pass my guard, he highly increases the chances of him getting a more effective pass on me. It's, it's, it's pretty black and white in that sense. I want to control at least one of his arms and he does not want me to control any of his arms, essentially. If we were here like this, right? And let's say I'm just playing like a butterfly sitting guard. I'm not controlling any of his arms. And I'm basically just working on like head control or leg control. He now has free movement. He has free movement and the free ability to really start pushing at my legs. We're wearing gi pants here. If, he's, if we're here like this and he's, we're holding the gi pants and I'm not controlling any of his arms, he's going to have the ability to have free movement and free control of my legs. I want to have control of at least one of his arms. If you watch some of the highest level grapplers who are very good at open guard, regardless of the, the guard that they're playing, a sputter guard, De La Hiva, sitting guard, you're going to see most of them, right, or pretty, almost all of them, controlling an arm. Or they're, they're focusing on one, one arm in some sort of way. So if we're here like this, right, and let's say I get like a two-on-one grip on him here. I have this two on one. Now when he goes to pass and goes to certain things, it's so much harder. See how he just naturally wanted to break mm -hmm. this grip on me because it's going to be so much harder for him to pass. If he just if he tries to go around this way, it's it's going to be difficult for him to do. If we go back, right, and he tries to go around this way, he's probably going to grab my leg. It's it's once again it's difficult for him to do. If we were here and he tried to do like a knee cutter on me, it's pretty much non-existent. He he gave me his back without me even doing anything. And these are scenarios um, that are just quick examples. We're not rolling live, this is not 100%, but you always wanna have the mindset that you're going against a live individual. This guy is trying to do something to you as you're trying to do something to them. So even when you watch these videos, think about if the person's going 100% and how it can possibly be. When we, let's say um, we're here again, right? Let's say I even have just double wrist control it's gonna be harder for the person to pass the guard. Another topic would be like, how do I keep my grips? And that's essentially another video, and it depends on the type of grips that you're playing. But if you at least have the focus of controlling at least one arm, then you're gonna have the ability to make your open guard much better. And with that, you don't wanna just control the arms and just sit here. I'm not controlling the arms and just sitting here trying to figure out what I can possibly do. I'm controlling the arms and I'm looking for things to happen so I can create openings and or take advantage of things that he gives me, okay? Like one scenario, if I'm here like this, right? I'm, I have a two, basically two hands on, on one wrist. This is a decent grip because when he goes to go to pull your hand back, it's difficult, right? So it's hard for him and this is a very good arm drag grip for me, for me to go for arm drags on him. Um, let's say I had uh, basically like a two on one grip on him and I'm nice and, I'm nice and tight like this. Like it's the same thing when he goes to move around here, I can start moving this and try to basically do like a two on one drag on him and work my positions on him. Those are very common for no gi. No gi scenarios, uh, wrist grips here are very, very strong. Two on one grips are very, very strong here or here. These are very strong. Um, 
Other grips that a lot of people play is they play like this reverse like Kimura grip here, like this. Same thing when he goes to work his passes. It's gonna be hard, I can stuff his hand in going for my drags. No gi arm drags are very common. I'm also gonna be looking for the opportunities to get under him, right? So it's not just about doing arm drags and all these type of things. It's using the grips to pay attention to their feet. Pay attention to what their legs are doing. If I'm using my grips to pay attention to what their legs are doing, I'm gonna be shooting inside and I'm gonna be coming after them. We're gonna talk about that in another video too. So when I'm like this, right, and I have my grip, let's say for example, he goes to move and he brings his body up a little bit, I'm using this. I use that to pull him in and get my position or I'll use that to get under him and get my position. Let's say for example, I have uh, this grip here. Right? So I'm here like this, I have like this two on one grip, and I use it to pull him and get underneath him. So now I can start working my situations. You know, I might be a leg lock player, and I go for my reaps and so on and so forth. But the point is I'm using that to get underneath them. I'm either using it so I can pull them to me, or I'm using it so I can get myself underneath them. I'm bringing myself to them. Because now when I'm under them, my open guard is even stronger here. Then it becomes um, less of an importance to control both arms because now I can start working under hooks. I can start working underneath the legs at this point. Like once I get under the legs and so on and so forth, I don't have to control the arms as much because my options are um, much more broad. So that's the big thing. You want to control at least one arm when you're playing against somebody. And I'm also going to give you some uh, slight examples with the gi on as well. Now a lot of people are gonna ask me, well, what if you wear the gi, is it different? Do I still need to control one arm? Can I do other things? Yes, you still need to control at least one arm when you're playing open guard. And the reason for that, even more so with the gi on, is because lots of people get collar dependent with the gi on. And I tell people I train with and my students all the time, do not be collar dependent. What I mean by collar dependent is they're here like this, they just grab a collar and they think this is acceptable. They think that this is a good way for them to play open guard, whether I'm sitting or I'm down like this. They think that this is acceptable and it's a good way for me to play my open guard game without even controlling any of the grips. This is highly common for beginners. Um, blue belts this is very common and I'm not even gonna lie, like some purple belts and brown belts and very few black belts, this is common too. You watch good black belts, right? They're not just they're not just collar dependent on a person. They're going to be working certain things. Now there are exceptions, right? So there's exceptions in the fact that if I grab his collar, I'm going to be using it to move right away. Okay? So if I'm here like this and I grab his collar, I'm not just going to be sitting here like this and give him free hands. I'm going to grab his collar, I'm going to be moving him immediately. I'm moving him this way and I'm moving myself this direction. We basically just did a collar drag Example, I'm going to be using the collar as soon as I grab it to get myself underneath them. But it has to be like a grab and go in my opinion. And the reason why it has to be a grab and go is if I do not choose to control at least one arm, which we're going to get back on that topic, is because if I just grab him like this and I don't control at least one of his arms, so I'm basically collar dependent at the moment, he still has two free hands. So since he has two free hands, it does, he doesn't even need to technically break this grip to work his passes. He can start working passes on me. And then make it hard for me to start um, playing my guard. I'm gonna have to do certain things to retain my guard and, and defend against him. So you can play got, you, you can play collars with the Gion, um, but you don't wanna be collar dependent. So let's go back to um, the, the arm grip here. It's, it's similar. I can, play, I can honestly play um, no gi grips with the gi on, but it, the difference is I can, I can get underneath, so let's kind of move up a little bit. I can get underneath and I can grab the, the cloth and just kind of like add a little bit more control here. Um, but I also have the ability to grab sleeves. I can do two on one sleeves here like this, because now when he goes to the pass, it's much harder. And I'm also using my feet on the hips too. We're going to talk about that in another video. So I'm here like this. I'm controlling, I'm working my different things, whether I have a pistol grip or I have my um, a cuff grip or something along those lines. And then when I combine it with a collar grip, it's, it's also very strong. Here, so now when he goes to move around, it's strong. 
It's a pretty strong grip. Look at it. Look, see where his foot came up? I'm using this. I'm using this to create openings for me to see things. You want to you wanna play your grips for the purpose of attacking them or seeing openings that they give you. What I mean by attacking them is you're using your grips to basically get underneath them, drag them by, take out one of their posts, right? Or see what they give you. Are they raising their weight up? Are they leaning backwards? Are they leaning forward? Are they leaning to their left? Are they leaning to their right? That's what makes a very good dynamic open guard player. And the same thing applies. You want to control at least one arm most of the time, especially when there's some distance. When we're here like this, right? Let's say there's some distance. I might even be like this. This is very common. Here, this is a whole different, this is a whole different topic where you're just flattening your back in here like this. You'll see lots of um, really, really good guard players who are very common. They'll come here, they'll do all this stuff, right? So when he goes to pass, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like fetled up. I'm doing all these different things, right? That's for like the, the really high elite. The purpose of this video, it, whether you're advanced or not, is to um, give you strong concepts that apply regardless, okay? There are some people who are very good at inverting and do all, all these different things, but not everybody's good at this. Controlling the grips in this manner, it doesn't matter what your size is, what your speed is, what your strength is, okay? It doesn't matter what your dexterity is or your agility. It still all applies in my opinion. So when I'm here like this, right? I, I, wanna, be, I wanna be getting like some grips on them. So now when I'm back on my, on my back, when he goes to pass, here I'm using the grips along with the pressure of my of the hips and my feet to control him. Just the fact that I have control of one arm is gonna make it harder and I can start riding up. So I'm here initially, he's pulling back, boom, but then look, now I ride up. Now his uh, alarm is gonna go off for him that I, he probably needs to get out. I'm gonna try to work, 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 work. And create scenarios for me to flip the script, right? Flip the script in the fact that I'm going from the bottom to the top because I made it happen, because I controlled the grips. There's so much more to it, uh, but I believe this is a very um, important concept. And it's, it's safe. It's safe in the fact that like, if you're controlling at least one of the person's arms, you're taking away half of their upper body limbs here. Like, it's like you're basically like, you're trying to amputate them essentially to where now they can only roll with one arm. If you've ever tried to just roll with somebody with one arm doing uh, like handicap training, you, you will notice the difference on how hard it is. And that's what you're trying to do to them. You're trying to basically make them handicap mm -hmm. in their passing. And by controlling at least one arm, you're going to do that whether it's gi or no gi. So play around with these ideas and these concepts. I believe they're, they will definitely help you out. And um, if you have any questions or comments, post below or send me an email. All right. Peace.